King of the Hill is a six minute five versus five infinite respawn game where teams battle for control of the three hill points on the field. The team that has accumulated the most total time across all three points at the end of the six minutes wins the match. Let's go over the fundamentals and some basic strategies and pitfalls to avoid. The field is a 125 foot by 125 foot square where the cover is rotationally symmetrical with a total of 20 cover pieces. There is one hill point in the center of the field and one near each team's spawn point. The hills are represented by the timers that players will hit the colored button associated with their side of the field to gain control of the hill until the opposing team presses their respective button on that hill timer. Before the match starts, teams will distribute 320 darts however they like between their players and five players for each team will line up in the starting area, which is 10 feet on either side of their team's spawn point. All players must have one foot on the line and one foot behind it when the match starts, and must immediately enter the field. Once on the field, players may move freely, taking control of hill points and tagging opposing players out. When a player is tagged out by being hit by an opposing dart on their person, gear, or blaster, they will immediately raise their hand above their head and take the quickest route back to their spawn while avoiding any active play on the way. These players may continue to communicate with their team, but may not leave any gear they were holding on the field once tagged. Upon reaching their spawn point, they will start a count of 15. Once completed, they may respawn. Respawning is the most complicated part of this game, and the hardest thing for new players to do. After the respawn count is finished, the player will lift up either their hand above their head with the blaster pointed directly at the ground, or their blaster pointed directly up with the muzzle over their head. This signifies that the player is able to enter the field, but are currently not an active player. While like this, the player can move along the field boundary on either side adjacent to their spawn point. This gives teams 250 feet of respawn area to work with. When a player wants to enter the field after their respawn is complete, they may do so by stepping both feet across the boundary line onto the field. Then they may bring their blaster up or down from its previous position. This order is important and what most struggle with. The blaster may not move until both feet have touched the ground in bounds. If you move your blaster early, it will result in a penalty, forcing you to run back to the respawn for a fresh 15 count. This is called a respawn penalty. You also may not start to enter the field, then stop part way. Once you start the motion, you must complete it. You can make noise, jump around, rev your blaster, or similar while you are outside the field waiting to enter, so long as you don't leave the state of showing you're an inactive player. If your blaster or hand signifying this drops, or you raise your blaster from its lowered state if your hand is above your head, you will have to run back to your spawn point. However, because you didn't cross the line onto the field, this penalty doesn't require you to take a respawn. You just have to touch your spawn point and you can come right back. This is called a reset penalty. There is a large strategic element to spawning in as well that we'll go over in a minute, but first let's touch on the other penalties to be aware of. We just went over the only reset penalty for not properly displaying your out of play status and the respawn penalty for illegal field entry, but the respawn penalty can also be received for not returning to spawn and completing the respawn timer after being tagged, a false start at the beginning of a match, leaving any gear on the field aside from magazines during a match, and stepping out of bounds as an active player. Then we move to double respawn penalties. As the name implies, you will take a double respawn timer when you make it back to your respawn point, totaling 30 seconds. This is received for illegal scavenging, as there is no scavenging of darts allowed. Blind firing, players are required to present a target of at least their head to the target they are firing at, ignoring tags. While it is understood that sometimes tags are not always felt, players that are tagged in ways that are obvious that the player knows they were tagged and they don't take it will be called. Likewise, this penalty can be received for calling that you tagged someone when you didn't. Also, unsafe play will get you a double respawn penalty. However, depending on the severity, it may also result in a triple respawn timer. The ref's calls are final, and arguing with the refs will not help you at all. If you have excessive penalties, physical or verbal altercations, or argue with the ref or staff, you may be removed from the match or tournament, and your team will have to play down a player for the rest of that match regardless of subs. This doesn't mean you can't have a conversation to ask why something was called the way it was to understand better for future matches or similar after a match is completed. The full rules are on the website and will be linked wherever this video is posted. Please read them as there are details not in this video that are important but would make this far too long to watch if included. 
let's talk some basic strategy and pitfalls to avoid. The first big pitfall that many new teams encounter is getting stuck in corner standoffs. It's common to see these corner standoffs in games, and there are times when they make sense, but it's not always. If your team has control of the middle hill timer, then it can benefit you to force one of the opposing players in a strong position to not be able to help their teammates. But if the opposing team controls the middle hill timer and you're standing at the corner not doing anything to impact the state of the field, the opposing team is benefiting from you standing there. Instead, you're better off bringing multiple people and going for a trade to gain control of that corner, as when spawning in, it's nearly impossible to win a one versus one when someone has their blaster ready and pointed at you. On that topic of bringing multiple people, another common pitfall is players spawning in one by one when the opposing team has field control. This results in those players getting tagged out repeatedly due to the numbers imbalance and their team not being able to make any progress. If your team is wiped or loses substantial numbers, it's often worth it to wait for everyone's respawn timer, then regroup and coordinate a respawn with multiple people that even if it's not completely successful, should result in some trades, forcing the opposing team to adjust, creating a better opportunity for your next respawn. It's highly recommended to bring multiple blasters if you can. Remember, you can register up to three for the tournament. And competitive games can put more stress on blasters, so it's common to see blaster failures during matches. So having a backup ready can be a big help. Another thing to consider is the dart cap. Being able to manage your darts and not run out early is a skill that is essential for this game. But the biggest thing that new players and teams should take away is that communication and coordination are your best friends. The game has an ebb and flow of ups and downs. So if you find yourself down, coordinate with your team and find the way to turn the game in your favor. Sometimes it can take more than one attempt, but it's always possible. This covers the basics of the King of the Hill format and you should be ready to compete. So find some teammates and I hope to see you on the field.